Hello and welcome to Christian Book Review. What am I doing with my hands? I don't know what this is about. Welcome to Christian Book Review. I'm Lucas Kitchen. Thanks for watching. You can find more content like this on freegrace.in. You can find the full write-up for this particular review at freegrace.in slash Wraithwood. That's W-R-A-I-T-H-W-O-O-D. Now, that is a really fun name for the book that you see behind me, Wraithwood by Alyssa Rote. Now, I found this book on, uh, online, of course, because that's where we find everything, but because uh, the author um, was on a list that was going to be at a writing conference that I'm going to be at soon, and so I thought, hey, it'd be fun to check out what she has written. And so, this is a... I just got to say, I... I really liked this book. Now, I only review books that I am endorsing for other people to read. I, I, if, if I read something and I don't like it, I don't make a review. So the fact that I'm making a review <clears throat> says that I like it, but, but I like this one particularly. Um, I didn't know what to expect going into it. I just, I just picked it up. I read it really fast, which is kind of rare for me. I'm kind of a slow reader. Um, and so I read it really fast and I really liked it. It just was really charming. It kept kind of jumping out as, at me as like, uh, oh, that's fun. I didn't, you know, I didn't expect that or whatever. So let's take a look at what this book is, uh, kind of the, the nuts and bolts here. So the title is Wraithwood, the Wraithwood Trilogy, book one by Alyssa Rote. If I am saying your name wrong, Alyssa, I am very sorry. I hope to meet you at the conference, and I'll learn how to say your name uh, in the correct way. This is my description of the aspects that are involved. It's a family-friendly, YA, modern, magical fantasy with ties to Arthurian legend. Sounds like a lot, but uh, it's tied together really well. Uh, the main characters... Gender is female. Now, for um, you readers out there, they're like, oh, I don't read books with uh, female lead characters. Don't let that scare you away. Um, really, this book is great for, for any reader, uh, any gender of reader. Um, ideal reader's age. Now, I put this at young adult, but you can tell I'm not a young adult anymore. I'm getting close to 40, and I still liked it. So, uh, you know, the, the main character is 14, I think. I think it was 14, um, but I still liked it. So, I, you know, I could have circled adult, but it's written for young adults. It's a, it's a, it's a fun book for uh, young adults, but you can enjoy it if you're an adult or, uh, or younger probably too. Content, family friendly. Um, so you hear magic and some, some people uh, are a little nervous about stories with magic in it. This, this one in particular um, goes out of its way to be family friendly, um, I, I think. Now one of the aspects about it which um, connects with Christian themes and it being family friendly is you've got these characters who are in um, well, you know, I said it's magical, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying it's a magical story. So they're in this conflict that involves magic and it involves bad guys. But on Sundays, they stop whatever they're doing to go to church, which I loved. I just thought, that's how my life feels. Doesn't matter what I'm doing during the week. I'm going to stop and go to church on Sunday. That's how I grew up, and that's, you know, that's what we do. So the characters, even though they're these very important you know, um, very important people doing important things like protecting the world. They still go to this this little country church um, in the uh, in the town near where their um, where their manor is, and so it's just I just thought how cool, how charming, and and actually there are some plot points that are placed within the church, so that was that was valuable. So it wasn't just an it didn't feel like just an add on. It just felt like. The, the author is cluing us into some of the things that the characters believe. Now, also, the characters occasionally um, um, hinted about their faith. Okay, so that was that was cool too. There there was a little bit. Now there wasn't long. There was no long discussions about their faith or anything. But there was enough to let you know. Okay, they're not pagans. You know, they they actually not only go to church, but they believe in uh, they believe in um, sort of a, you know, standard Christian 
uh, both morality and faith. So I put it as, as subtle because there's no preaching, there's no you know message really shared uh, Christian-wise, but it's still in there. And so that was, uh, and so I'm, I'm just going to say uh, thank you, Alyssa, for doing that. I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a fun. A fun thing. So here's my endorsement. This modern story of magic is a coming-of-age tale set in an eccentric modern world with ancient Arthurian ties. There's some mild action, but the story is driven by mystery and the 14-year-old's discovery of her magical heritage. One thing I loved about this book was that the characters went to church. Of course, I already mentioned that. Even in the midst of danger, their faith is not front and center, but it's a pres it's present in the book. There's a typo there. It's present in the book. This is a family-friendly book. It's great for teenage readers, but enjoyable for all ages. Uh, the publisher's description starts this way. I'm not going to read the whole publisher's description because you can go and get that really easily. Brianna is sent off to summer uh, for the summer to live with an uncle she didn't know she had. However, she soon finds that Wraithwood Estate, her uncle's creepy old mansion, holds as many secrets as the man himself. When Brenny is warned not to explore any of it, her curiosity only grows. As unnatural events take place and Brenny hears whispers of a hidden war, she must unravel the truth about her family's mysterious past if she wants to survive. Something terrible happened at Wraithwood 30 years ago and Brenny is determined to find out what, even if it means confronting the possibility of magic. That magic is real. I, I said I wasn't going to read the whole thing, but but I like it. I just, uh, you know, it's kind of fun even just reading the description. Um, so Alyssa wrote is just a, a, a good, just a good writer. I, I mean, and, and there were, there were but I'll say this too. There were aspects, I'm going off the script here, but there were aspects in this book that um, that surprised me. And I'm going to tell you why that is interesting to me in a moment. But um, but anyway, we'll come back to it. So the storytelling, what ratio of speech to description? Um, there was lots of dialogue. I love dialogue. And I don't love dialogue that's on the nose, you know, that's real wooden, obviously. Who would like that? But uh, but the dialogue in this was was quaint, and it was fun, and, and I felt like the characters had, uh, you know, uh, their own voice. So I think that was a win. Narration to thoughts. Um, this one wasn't overpacked with inner monologue, although there was quite a bit in there. But there was it was also a good ratio, so I felt like that was well done. Uh, the focus of the relationships in the stories uh, really was was an ensemble focus more than a lot of books that I come across. Um, so she is the character is you know she kind of is injected into this magical world and she's put in this mansion basically and there's a whole cast of interesting characters in the mansion and some from the town around so there's just there's a number of characters to get to know now sometimes where authors trip in my opinion is they introduce too many to you at one time um she Alyssa didn't do that she she kind of let you meet them uh, slow enough so that you could you know, remember who you're who you're reading about. So, um, great ensemble work there. Uh, what's the overall relational focus? I, you know, I put it on the platonic side because uh, there's a character that I suspect might grow later into um, into something romantic, but it really wasn't it wasn't the case in this book. I don't know. She's got a, a second book that's either just come out or or going to come out soon. I'm interested to see where that goes, but for this book, I put it uh, leaning, definitely leaning toward platonic. What kind of relationships are primarily developed by the hero? Platonic. Now you're saying, what well, didn't you just say that? Well, this is this is the other ensemble. Lots of um, lots of relationships that uh, it deals with. Oh, oh, and what I'm thinking about there is she develops the, the prime. Really, I guess you could say the primary relationship she's developing is between her uncle. Um, and uh, he's an eccentric, very interesting character. And so um, it's kind of a, more of like a mentoring, it's like an intergenerational mentoring um, 
relationship, which by the way, uh, I was talking to my mom the other day. She's an avid reader. She has, she says that there's a particular aspect of books that she likes and it's intergenerational relationships, not, not romantic relationships, platonic relationships between, uh, different, uh, uh, aged people like a, like a grandma and her granddaughter or a mentor, an older mentor and, uh, you know, a younger person or whatever. And so this book has it, mom. So maybe you'd like it. I don't know. But, um, but anyway, uh, mood. Now I put this one at playful. I mean, there, there are ominous notes in it, but the, the story was playful to me. It just had a lot of, um, had a lot of character and it gave time to just sort of uh, sit and enjoy the world that Brenny is uh, coming into. The hero, um, the hero's journey here is not so much about strength, it's more about cleverness. She's got to discover the world, she's got to understand it, she's got to synthesize um, her own uh, version of how she's going to interact with it. So it definitely leans toward cleverness. Uh, the description, how much detail is given, I'd say sparing. Um, in you know, in fantasy, my opinion, fantasy often leans toward being um, very intricate and very detailed on the description. Um, Wraithwood didn't really do that. It was enough. It was satisfying, but it wasn't overdone. So I appreciated that. His description in a natural. It's very uh, na- very natural, not poetic or embellished. Um, the exposition. Uh, the narration, is it, uh, is the exposition narrated or discovered? Um, it was definitely discovered in this. I'm trying to think if, yeah, I can't remember a place where I felt like the narrator was just telling me things that I might need to know. I feel like I was discovering the entire world at the same pace that the main character was discovering. I personally like that kind of book. There are readers that like the narrator just to tell them the exposition, but I, I really prefer to discover it along with the character. Does the exposition explain or expand the world? I put restrained here because um, because the the exposition really was tight. It stayed tight with the story. You weren't getting a bunch of extraneous information that you wouldn't need in the end. Basically, uh, the author gives us what we need to understand the story and a little bit more to kind of be excited about the world. Now, I suspect that might be because she's building a she's building a series here and she's got future books. The plot was very speculative. Uh, it's a magical story, modern, uh, set in the modern world, but magical, so put it on the speculative side. Um, is the plot d- uh, is the plot rely on serendipity or decisiveness? There's a typo there. I need to fix that. Um, it it was twisty. I mean, there was some twists in here that I didn't I didn't suspect. Uh, there was one one thing that just which became a pretty big part of the story. But when when uh, she did it, I kind of even giggled to myself. I thought, oh, that's that's clever. I've never I've never heard of anything quite like that. Uh, so there was some there was some good twists in it. Uh, what is the pacing of the story like? It's very, it's, I'll, I'll say it was very measured in the beginning. This is why I didn't put it all on one side. It was very measured in the beginning, but then it got really urgent, um, maybe three quarters of the way through, maybe, maybe halfway through. Um, but she gave plenty of time for us to get acquainted with the world before it got real urgent. Um, and I think that was a good move. I know that if you think about some of your favorite uh, modern magical stories. Um, oh, I, I, I'll use Harry Potter. I mean, this is a good comparison to Harry Potter. It had a lot of the, a similar feel to it. Um, in Harry Potter, they, they let you get introduced to the world for quite a while before you even know what the, um, what the big dilemma is going to be. And so the urgency sort of can wait, which is ironic. Uh, you know, it's urgency that can wait. So um, I thought that was good. Uh, the scope, how much do, uh, how much ground does the story cover? Now, I'm putting localized here because technically the almost the entire story happens at the mansion, but there is a lot of travel involved and I'm not going I don't want to spoil anything. I'm just saying that technically it was localized, but it didn't feel localized. Like when I was filling this out, 
I actually was thinking, well, yeah, I guess it was localized, but that hadn't even occurred to me. It felt like an odyssey, but physically the amount of ground that was covered is actually, you know, really close. And so I think you'll see what I mean if you read it. A mostly internal or external discoveries. Uh, it's definitely a self-discovery. I mean, there's a lot of realm discovering in this uh, in this story, but I th I lean towards thinking of it as self-discovery because the main character is discovering her own heritage, her own family line, um, which does affect her understanding of the world. But uh, it's definitely a self-discovery thing. Are the main goals achieved by a single character or a group? This is definitely a team a teamwork story. Now, main character is uh, is singularly important in that and she has I mean, maybe you could say the biggest role but what I loved about this is there is a um, a very fatherly character in this story who really carries the day uh, for the most part and then at the at the end um, Brenny the main character has to come in and play her part or things aren't going to work out but I liked that I like stories that kind of give a um, give a positive, um, a, a positive role to father type role models and this one definitely did I thought that was a really of course he's an uncle in this story but um, but that was that was a, a valuable piece to me um, the stakes if if the main character doesn't win we're talking about annihilation so that you know the stakes are Hi. Uh, the views of this book review are those of the reviewer and do not necessarily reflect that of any particular organization. So you can get this uh, right up and um, dig in a little bit deeper by going to freegrace.in slash Wraithwood. W-R-A-I-T-H-W-O-O-D. Thanks for watching and look for future reviews on freegrace.in. See you later.